Welcome to the Dula Buys Live. Today we have special guests, um, my brother from VOH and Bobito Garcia. Hope everyone is good tonight. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to everyone on this night. Just inviting. Hope everyone is good. Great stories tonight. Um, what's up, Tariq? Blessings, bro. Bendiciones, bro. Como esta? Espero que todo bien. All right. Let me see. Peace and blessings to everyone tonight. My brother was good, bro. Chilling, bro. Everything's good, bro. Can't complain, man. Positive, you know? Carlo, bendiciones. My brother. Oh, wrong screen. All right. There we go. Peace and blessings to everyone tonight. My brother, what's up, bro? What's good, boss? What's good? How's everything, bro? Chilling, man. Chilling. How are you? Chilling, bro. Can't complain, bro. Um, send send this live if you can to a couple of people. I'm gonna do the same thing right now gotcha. before we start with your story. Yeah. Um, one second. Let me just fix this. What's up, Carlos? Hit me up on WhatsApp. Ah, the Lorcicio. I was like, yo. What's up, Kenny? Mi hermano, blessings. Carlos is all good. Carlos is part of the process, you know? It's part of the process, bro. <clears throat> you see the, the little the little showcase in the back? I'm trying to trying to upgrade my 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 the, the, the live and stuff, bro. <laughs> see. I see. Miles high was good, bro. Let me forward this live to a couple of people. Yeah, like I said, I'm doing the same. Hope everyone is good tonight. Peace and blessings to everyone. Bet. All right, bro. So while people start coming on, um, tell us a little bit about your story, bro. So, yeah, man, uh, I go by the name of Brett Bronson. I'm representing uh, Havistro, New York, Rockland County, New York, 845 on the check-in as usual. Um, I'm the commissioner of BOH basketball. Uh, we started in 2013 with an unofficial season, we'll call it. 2013, we started in Havistro. Um, we had four teams, 40 players. It was just, you know, me and a couple of my friends talking trash at one point. You know, my guys would be better than your guys kind of deal, you know. And then um, summer 2014, uh, we kind of started, well, I kind of started taking it a little bit more seriously, you know. And from that point on, we just kind of put it in motion to get to whatever this point is, whatever is perceived by the people, you know. Facts, facts, bro. Um, were you a basketball player like in your life in your lifetime? So funny thing, when I was a young boy, yeah, I hooped a lot. Uh, I never actually played school ball, which is funny because uh, not never played. So funny thing, when I was in seventh grade. Have a straw middle. I ended up getting cut. So wow. grade, I came back that year, and uh, I knew I was a lot better than pretty much everybody else. But uh, so I came back that year. But the coach wanted me to play like power forward or something, and I was I was just not feeling that power forward idea. So I just, <laughs> uh, I just did not play. You know what I'm saying? Louis, what up? What up, Louis? Joe, Ma, what's goody, baby? How you feeling? So. I just did not play, you know what I'm saying? So then, um, now my freshman year, uh, I ended up trying out for the uh, freshman team. Uh, and it's crazy, at the tryouts, the eighth grade coach came to the ninth grade tryouts, and dude was like, you know, oh, you plan to quit this too? And I oh said, plans to put me in the right position. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I ended up making the freshman team. Uh, freshman basketball wasn't really much, but there was a few milestones we had. We beat uh, we beat Chestnut Ridge, who at that point in time they didn't win a game in like four. I mean, they didn't lose a game in like four years or something like that. And uh, 
uh, a folklore story is behind the scenes, my freshman team beat the varsity team in a scrimmage. And the coach made them run the rest of the practice because they lost to us. So that was kind of dope, too. But aside from that, uh, I got saved because uh, rest his soul, Dennis Brown. Rest in peace, Dennis Brown, Sansendale Park. He pulled me out of Sansendale Park, man, and he uh, gave me the opportunity to go to the city, play against a lot of guys in the city. I ended up playing in Dykeman. I ended up playing in the Rucker. I ended up playing in um, this thing called the Valley in the Bronx. Um, my cousin who lives on Rosedale, I, I remember you talking about Watson. It's funny because when I was a young boy, I only knew that park, that park on Watson. It was called the Big Park because we were so young then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast forward to now, I ended up meeting Lee, the, the dude that runs the Watson League. I ended up meeting Lee last summer and telling him that story. And he was like, yo, that's crazy. And we ended up linking up and exchanging information and stuff. So shout out to Watson Basketball. Hopefully we get some, you know, together so we can make this happen, you know? Bro, that's that's interesting because um, did did New York City um, inspire you to be an MC, bro? Well, I was born in the Bronx, and uh, you know what I mean, like New York City. I meant to say like New York City, like tournaments. You said Watson Street Ball. Did it motivate you to like nah, or it just came in you like to tell us a little bit about that? Nah, my motivation was probably the people that live closer to me. And I wasn't motivated. The only motivation to be in the city is to beat y'all, to destroy y'all, to make a name for where I'm from. That's the, that's the only thing, you know. As, aside from that, um, probably the bigger influences locally was probably uh Boo, this dude named Steve Diaz, uh, Air Juan. You know, there was a dude named Marquette. I don't even know if they remember him. He played in like Havistro Middle in the middle court. He was a beast. He would dunk everything. It was a lot of guys, man, but nah, it was uh my influence was from here going down there. They gave me the hunger. Dennis Brown gave me the confidence and I just wanted to prove that I could play. You know what I mean? Cool, cool, bro. So tell us a little bit about your experience, um, as far as like, you know, being um, you know, the guy, the voice, bro. Tell us a little bit about that. So what's crazy is um backtracking now. The reason why the league, I feel like, is where it's at is because I have this, this like, ghostly aura with people because they remember me, but they don't know if the, if it's me kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? What's good, Super Pack? So it's crazy to, to say that because, like, a lot of the guys that are in my league, they don't even realize that I hooped with them at some point in time in our lives. You feel me? Wow. Like, they might not remember me, but I remember them. Like, guys that I've seen at parks, you know, played in tournaments with them or whatever the case, but they probably didn't remember me or don't remember me. Because at the time, we are um, just backtracking, you know. At the time, when we started, there was Torn Valley that was going, and they were popping. There was uh, West Rock that was going. That was popping. Uh, Spring Valley Summer League was ridiculous. Shout out to Kwame. Kwame was a, actually Kwame was a big reason for the MCing because Kwame um, in Spring Valley, he was the one that kind of put together in my eyes one of the first like major, major, really respectable summer leagues in my county. You know, I uh, got an opportunity because of being popular. I got an opportunity to put together tournaments, you know, like one day tournaments and things of that nature while I was growing up. But nothing like Kwame. The thing that he put together was something very solidified. And I and I feel like if Kwame had what's good, what's good. If Kwame had um social media back then to highlight everything that we were doing, it would have been you know what I mean? But everybody's gonna be able to say that. You feel me? So but um Thanks. you know how it goes. That's 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 amazing, bro. Um Tell us a little bit about uh, your tournament, bro, and um, its history, if you can. So, um, like I said, we took it real seriously starting 2014. So we only did summer at that point. Then we moved into 2015. We did uh, summer and fall. So we had two seasons in a year. Then 2016, we moved into summer 
fall and winter. So we did three seasons a year. Um, fast yeah. forward, um, 2019 was our first episode. So that was good too. You know what I mean? Um, so basically the league has just been expanding. Every year we go up in uh, amount of players. Last summer we had 200 players. Uh, the summer before that, we had 180, no, we had 160 players, so we had 16 teams. And in between, when we do our in-between seasons, we have about yeah. players in our fall and our winter. I mean, 12 teams in our fall and our winter, about 120 players each. So we're really rocking at a crazy pace, at a crazy rate. So to say the number of seasons would be kind of crazy because we have so many in-between seasons as well. And not to mention one-day tournaments that I've hosted, like the uh, Bronson Invitational. Uh, there's been <laughs> – this it's just a lot of stuff that we've been doing out here that I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to shine some light on. For sure, bro. No, we went this year, the New York, New York City Black Eagles, and uh, for us it was an honor, bro. You know, despite it being a hard day for us where uh, Kobe Bryant passed away, um, very difficult day for all of us on and off the court um, right. worldwide. And we was in an actual game playing. And to see the level of competition that you had that day, bro, was truly amazing. And it was a humbling experience because my guys got a wake-up call. You know what I mean? A wake-up call that, hey, I got to be in the gym. I got to get stronger. I got to be better. So, you know, for sure, for sure, when we do match up again, hopefully we'll have the same roster. I'm going to see if I find a picture in the video. Mm -hmm. So we can have the same roster, like my roster, your roster, and do that same matchup again because that day was strong for all of us. And for us to months later or, you know, maybe a year later, whenever this is over, reunite, I know it's going to be a beautiful thing, bro. That would be um, dope. Yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit about that day, bro. How you felt, man, during and after, man. So that day was uh, crazy. We're talking about uh, the day of Kobe's death. Um you know, we planned the game to play against each other that day. Um, everything was pretty much going going well, you know, good game, good energy. Everything was good. And then one of my young boys, uh, King Mills, shout out to him. He was like, uh, yo, Brad, um, Kobe died. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just like, what? Because, you know, I'm running around doing the mic thing. So he's, I'm passing him. He's like, yo, Kobe died. And I'm like, what? So I pass him, I keep going. And he's like, nah, yo, Brett, for real, Kobe died. And I'm like, nah, maybe because LeBron passed him, they're like, nah, Kobe's dead. You feel exactly, me? Exactly, exactly. I, I guess that's the rapper in me or something. But I'm thinking like, well, Kobe just got skipped, so LeBron passed him. So now they're like, oh, Kobe's dead now. So I'm like, all right, maybe that's it. But nah, I was like, pull it up. So he pulled it up, actually. And we were looking at it. And if you remember, I was still like, like nah, hold on. Let's uh, let's let's get everybody a chance to check their phone. If you remember, that was uh, before I called timeout. After this was like during. It was like almost almost simultaneously. Like I was I was walking around and I'm thinking about it and I'm like, damn, what the hell? Kobe's dead. And I'm like, nah. So that's when I'm like, nah, we gotta check the phones. And then you were like, yo, we need a timeout. Remember? And then we were out <laughs> the baseline. And then even one of the referees were like, yo, hold on, he can't be calling timeout. And I'm like, nah, this is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold Hello. on. Hello. Hello. We can get back to the game. We ain't worried about no timeouts. I'm the motherfucker. I mean, I'm the commissioner. We'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right with the allotted timeout. You feel me? So yeah. after doing that, and then, I don't know, the energy was just different. Because, you know, I've never really been in an experience where I, like, idolized somebody and I lost somebody. I was really, you know, but Kobe being a Laker fan and watching, like, literally watching this person on – on TV, go crazy for for 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, you don't watch them cook literally everybody. It's, oh, man, on and off the court. It was just crazy. So to be in a position like that, I don't know, that, that just, the energy was down afterwards, obviously after the news. So that was not, that was not a good feeling to be a part of because, uh, you know, now that memory is always going to be like that. Like, that feeling is always going to be there, regardless of what I remember. You can never get rid of the feel, you know? Of course, of course. Um, so, you said, you, um, share, us, share us a little bit about your music. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Antonio from Spain. Dan, Antonio, bro, what time is it in Spain, bro? It's like 3 in the morning, bro. That's Much love, Antonio. That's love right there, bro. Shout out to Spain on the check-in. Um, Facts. 
So what it is with music, we're really putting together this uh, playlist. So we, VOH Basketball, you know, me, I'm off of my town and all that good stuff. So I don't really see a point in playing music for guys that are rich already, you know, like Drake and Future and this and that. It doesn't make sense to me when we have so many talented musicians where we're at that are just looking for an outlet to be heard. What's the point of them making music or creating if they're not going to be given an outlet? So what we do here is we make sure that our local artists, you know, they submit some music. Usually we get it on the playlist, and that's the only songs we play during our games. We don't really play too much outside music. We want to keep everything in-house so our feel is real, you know? And if it runs, yeah. right. Of course, that's, that's amazing, bro. Bro, like, on and off the court, I would say with you, uh, my boy Carlos from Dominican Republic is on, bro. It would be a blessing that maybe when we do one of these basketball tours, you definitely shed light with your music and shed light with your talent that you have. So, 2021, bro, let's make that happen. Carlos, if you are on, on the on the live right now, bro, this is the guy right here, bro. For sure, man. Dominican Republic would benefit. I'm definitely with it. And shout out to Havistro, New York, because uh, if we go on the Facts. East Park, you know I got to bring my guys with me. You feel me? Facts. I don't know if you know, I play with the team Havistro in the Libatam League. Yeah, yeah, I'm a yeah. new addition to the team. So for me, playing with them and knowing that you're from there, it feels mutual, We're like family. So Definitely, 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 definitely. So, you know, what's up with you, though? Everything is good, bro. Can't complain, bro. You know, I got a new look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <Very> dynamic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you as an MC, what nickname will you give me? Like, basketball-wise. With the body, uh, right quick. You got ten seconds. Krillin been killing. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> text me that when we finish this. Text me that, bro. I wanna. I like that. <laughs> That's how we gonna do it. Like, oh, uh oh, oh, he's powering up. Krillin, Krillin on the power up. The facts, bro. <laughs> bro, so um. What can we expect from you in the near future? Like, what are your plans? I mean, it don't have to be specific details, but like, like, what can we expect? If whether it's basketball, music, what motivation you have for us for you for you? Like, can we expect for the near future, bro? Um, the next thing we're trying to do is expand. All we want to do is try to figure out ways to expand the league in any way possible. So uh, this summer we're expecting we're projected to have about 24 to 32 teams somewhere in that range. So I really want to put on a real show this summer because last, sum last summer was crazy. And uh, we actually had a team from, speaking of Dominican, we actually had a team from Dominican College, our local college, D2 school, we actually had them come through to the gym, and they was they the ones that actually ended up winning the tournament. You know what I'm saying? Like a dark horse. So that was dope because everybody expected, like, the usual powerhouses of the local entities to win. And here comes this team that nobody <laughs> ever heard of wearing purple jerseys. They're called Globo Gym. So everybody's thinking they're a joke while they're <laughs> out there, you know, really putting it to people. So that was kind of dope. So we want to expand on the league. Uh, eventually, I want to try to get into other sports. Like, I want to try my hand at, like, co-ed softball or something so we could include the women more. I actually do want to start doing a women's league, you know, like, uh, more for her so we could try to get that going. I think that would be dope. Uh, we got the Respect the Youth Tournament. I'm trying to get off the ground. I'm thinking of having, like, a week-long tournament from, like, Monday to Sunday. So, picture, like, if you play on Monday, you win. You play on Wednesday, you win. Play on Friday, you win then the championships on Sunday, you know, something for the kids. I'm trying to get it fully sponsored. So none of the kids got to pay. They just pull up and play. If it rhymes, then it's right. That's bars, by the way. But, uh, you know, just a couple things. Uh, we're thinking about developing a VOH app so it's more direct. So, like, when the games are starting, you could just, boom, it's right on your phone. You could just watch the games right there. Pick your favorite teams. You know what I'm saying? You want to buy a uniform. Um we're just, like I said, man, it's just a lot. Uh, the podcast, shout out to the Blast Podcast. Those that didn't know, we have a, we actually have a podcast attached to our league. So if you miss any other games and you decide that you don't want to watch the YouTube for whatever reason, we have a podcast that actually tells you about the games and it gives you a good recap. 
and they actually do their rankings. So that's a dope thing. Uh, we're going to move that podcast into a more visual space because right now it's, um, it's just audio. So we're going to move the podcast in a dope visual space so we can get guests to come on the show and actually be interviewed and talk about their teams. Or it's not even just going to be about basketball. It's going to be more about everything, you know? Fashion. Culture, culture. Yeah, fashion, sports, culture, gaming. You know, we're going to have a, a music segment, VOH Play Hits. We're going to have a music segment for all the musicians, you know? Um <laughs> M-O-R, M-O-R Apparel, you already know. Uh, we I got need some, I need some, bro. What's up, bro? <laughs> we got you, man. We got you. We got some Send me the link. Coming. Send me the link. I'll share it, bro. P people support, man. Got you. I'll send that to you right away. Um, We got some things coming right there from that. We're going to move into uh making more women's clothes, like I said, M-O-R for her. So the women's league and the women's clothing can hopefully go hand in hand. So, you know, a couple things, man. You know, always trying to figure something out so we could uh, keep the ball rolling. You know what I mean? Thanks, bro. No, I love it, man. I love it. And I know the the viewers are definitely interested in all you do, bro. So, definitely, um, VOH Basketball. Um, you guys see the the tag, of v, just like that, VOH Basketball. I'm going to write it down right here. So, after this, man, you guys follow this man and you know what I mean? support him because indeed he's doing great things not only for his community but for also the world so you are ready bro, bro so um what i was gonna say so w would you be interested in like coming to like brooklyn i mean i live in the bronx but like i run the rodney park summer league and also the doodle by summer league here in the bronx mm -hmm. um in in noble playground here um would you be interested in coming to the city bro and like Doing your thing and like emceeing and stuff is that something that you might want to do maybe? Um, like emceeing like a game or you talking yeah. about yeah 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 I would come out there to do a game why not? For sure, bro. You know New York City is you know you from here so it's a platform where talents are showcased, bro. And it's like I've seen a lady, bro, like take pictures at a kids tournament, yeah. ask to do a men's tournament, and then boom, yeah. Not to cut you off, but we just put the link right there, morpalus.com. Make sure you go check your things out. Check it out, check it out, check it out. We got a lot Perfect, of stuff. Man, please support that. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to nah, you good. So yeah. that logo, is a guy running? Yeah. Cause that's oh, a guy. You, you know what I'm saying? We don't stay stagnant around here. Got to keep going. Always keep going. That's you hot, should, bro. You definitely should know that from listening to your story. <laughs> yeah, bro, definitely. That's a lot of... That that right there, that that image right there reminds me of so many times, bro. Rain, snow, everything. For real, for real, got to keep going. All them battles. So back to the lady. You said there was a lady that came down there. Yeah, so she was uh taking pictures. Facts, keep it moving. Thank you, Mister B. And um, she took pictures at a little tournament, and then from there she got linked up to do a men's tournament. Bro, and now she works for Nike, bro, like in less than a year. So the, 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 the reason why I share that story is because New York City, they pro, it provides a lot of opportunity. Yes, everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's grinding for the same thing. But if, if you make it happen, wherever you at, you know, I say New York City because we're we from here. Yeah. But just like, yo, man, like if you keep going, like they saying right here, got to keep going, keep, keep, keep it moving, et cetera, et cetera. Yo, you're going to see that at the end of the tunnel. There's going to be light. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And it's so important for us to, like, just continue with it, whether it's you with your music, your brand, the basketball, everything. My father, rest in peace, always said, like, you could do 10 things, and that you'll always be successful at one. But once you be successful at one, then you'll be successful at two, three, four, five, and then little by little, you'll be successful at all of them. That's a fact. That's a fact. But that's that's what putting the work in does. You know what I'm saying? You put that work in from the ground up and you pretty much develop whatever you're going to develop at your own pace because your timeline is different. That's another thing. You don't got to worry about nobody else. Because if I worried about everybody else, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Because like I told you earlier, there was plenty of leagues going on while our league was going on. You know, but I wasn't worried about what they were doing. I was worried about what I was doing. You feel me? Like, yeah, they were, they were they were bigger than we were. They had more players. I used to hear everybody telling me, like, what are you going to do? You don't have no fans. I used to hear it all, brother. Trust me. I don't forget. I use that as fuel. You feel me? 
I ain't gonna. Yeah. But that's the fuel that I use. I've always had the fuel. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't even know why people even doubt me anymore. Like at this point. <laughs> like you know what, bro? Like, sorry to cut you. No. Doubters or supporters, it's all good, bro. It's all good. You know why? Because. My father, again, rest in peace. He was like me and my brother's mentor, bro. Like mm -hmm. we wasn't, we wasn't ever from the streets. We didn't have like that, that street smart. You got what I'm saying? Because we weren't really like in the streets. But like, he always told us, bro. Like, yo, like, negative and positive feedback that people give you, regardless of what it is, is good feedback. Why? Oh, yeah. Because your name is in those people's mouths, good or bad. So, at the end of the day, just embrace it, take it, and keep moving forward. Positive yeah. energy makes you stronger. Negative energy makes you even tougher. So, that's it. Keep moving forward, no matter what anybody says. And that's a fact. That is definitely a fact. That's how I be moving. <laughs> Trust that's me. Facts, bro. Trust me. So, so uh, there's a kid that looks up to you because you're a public figure. You are a public figure. I'm saying it like talking to you. Yeah. So there's a kid that knows your story. There's a kid maybe watching right now, a teen, a man, somebody. And that person is in need of motivational words from you for them to walk out of that gym, to walk out of that concert, to walk out of wherever they at, where you're at, with, with their head up. What will you tell that person in less than a minute? I'm going to tell that person, stay to what you're doing. Figure out what your passion is. And then whatever it is, find out who else has that similar passion and network. Because who you know, and I'm going to say this again, who you know is almost the greatest thing. Because your job, that job that you work at, they don't give a damn about your work history. Nah. You know what they're doing? They're calling your reference to find out about your background, to find out what type of worker you are. Not if you could do the job, because they could teach anybody to do the job. You feel me? <laughs> so it's to find out what type of person you are. So that reputation, trust me when I tell you, that reputation, please, please, please keep that reputation intact. Because you're going to need it. Because that dude you gave a wedgie could be that same dude that could open a door for you. You feel me? So you got to figure out that balance. That's all I'll tell them. Thank you, bro. Nah, it's crazy that, <laughs> that's crazy how you said the dude with the wedgie. Because as a kid, I was that kid that was always getting wedgie or whatever. <laughs> like, for real. Like, yo, I, I've, I've witnessed like over 50 wedgies or 70 wedgies in my lifetime, bro. Like, yo, it was bad, bro. And and those like you saying those people years later, what's up, blessings, to everyone. And those people in the years later are the ones that's like, yo, what's up, yo, you know what I mean? Like, and it's crazy. And the wedgies wasn't like something like for fun. It was something to get me upset, something to put me down. You know, bullies. Yes. And it's it's just crazy that you mentioned that because I can totally relate to that. And wow, I, it's just you use a simple word that can be a memory like me like my story a memory of my complete childhood bro a wedgie that's yeah. crazy i tell <laughs> i tell all my friends all my people anybody that listens anybody that decides to listen i always tell them that language is key the things that you say are extremely important you know what i'm saying because those words are triggers they they're, they're things to memory you know so facts just keep your things intact especially keep your words Facts. No, this is 100%. You're 100% right, bro. Um, Quick shout out, bro, to everyone that has been on and anyone Word. that's going to see this live later on. Word. Shout out to everybody that's been on the check-in. Shout out to everybody in VOH Basketball. Shout out to MOR Apparel. Shout out to the Blast Podcast, Overlook Beats. Uh, You know, we out here, man. Overlook, I mean, VOH Basketball, we're out here. We're just trying to bridge these gaps. Realistically, I'm just trying to build an alternative so if a kid like me who grew up who was probably just as talented or better than whoever else was on that school team, uh, he has an opportunity to be seen maybe in a different way because school isn't for everybody, unfortunately. So, 
you know, that's what this league is about. The league is about putting people in position to be seen so we could create an opportunity for them. That's really what this is about. Perfect, bro. Perfect, bro. Bro, I mean, um, thank you for taking out of your time, bro. I really appreciate the mutual love, bro. I was in your live last week, and now you're here. Um, so it's really uh, since, since the first day we met, bro, we connected. Well, from social media, then straight to uh, when we met, the day when Kobe Bryant passed away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God put us with that connection for a reason, bro. So hopefully, you know, we'll get that rematch. Definitely get that rematch. Because I shot three air balls that day, bro. My career high in air balls. I mean, um, <laughs> it must have been the altitude or something, you know. <laughs> Word, that's weird. that was a high altitude? Nah, I'm just trying oh, to. Oh, I'm like, yo, you're trying to help me. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Nah, yeah, bro. So I really appreciate it, bro, from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you, bro, for, again, taking out of your time, bro. And um, to the viewers that's on, follow VOH Basketball. Um, he has lives during the week, interesting stories um, with basketball players, people in the music world. So, you know, follow his page, follow his support, what he does, because at the end of the day, when we support each other, that's all that matters. So thank you, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Who you got coming on next? I got Babito Garcia Ooh. coming on, Ooh. but uh, he, yeah. he he had told me after ten o'clock, and um, I think he's uh with his family right quick because he has to put his son to bed, etc. So he hasn't replied yet. So I'm once I'm, I'm we're done. I'm gonna give him a call to see um how long it's gonna um, take. But bro, when 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 he had reached out to me saying that Tuesday he wanted to get on. Right away, I thought about you, bro, because you're in that world. So, it would what a what an honor would have been to bless you with the opportunity to come on this live with a legend like him. So, for sure, bro, you already I, know, man. Bro, I I 100% appreciate that, and I'm sure you know you're gonna set it up, and we're gonna meet eventually, and you know everything will be all good. You know, I'm I'll be honored, like I said, because I I damn sure played NBA streets. <laughs> Facts, facts. And I damn sure listened to the radio and had my tape deck going and had to press the record button with the play button when he was on because I'm that <laughs> old. You feel me? So trust me, that is a that is a legendary situation that you're creating for me, and I really appreciate that. So For um, sure, bro. I, for sure, bro. We are allowed out, and I get the opportunity to come out there to Brooklyn and all that, and we get to do this. Sounds good, bro. So um, the viewers that's on, a quick shout-out to... um. OG, how you doing? Sean, Jason, Carlos, Space, Beats, um, Tim Sanders, um, Team Scott, and Mr. B. Um, I'm going to log out, and I'll be back in like five, ten minutes uh, with Babito Garcia. Um, my brother, Brett, appreciate you, bro. God bless you, bro. And hopefully we'll get another live coming on soon. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. I was thinking, bro, what you think? What you think, bro? Um... I seen uh, some people do a live like uh, a live music like a concert. Maybe uh you know I rap too. Okay. So maybe we can bless blessings blessings. Um maybe we can do like a live like this and like promote it for like a whole week and we'll perform our songs. Like I'll do a track then you do a track. Boom 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 for like a whole hour or whatever. What do you think? I'm with that. Let me know. Sounds good, bro. I'm gonna test it out this Saturday to see how it goes. And then we'll do it for the following week. But for sure, bro, we'll do like a little concert for the people. I, I'm with that. Let's make it happen. Sounds good, my brother. So we'll definitely link up and we'll talk. Um, Guys, whoever's on, um, in five, ten minutes, uh, Babito Garcia will be on. So hope to see you guys then. All right, brother. Thank you, man. You already know, bro. Peace.